No mai ano hari atu ano aku mihi fa kafeta aku fa kamano a kia koto katoa kota tu mai kite hui ko mihi ngarangi hau e kawe ana i te Māori o te tata wānanga i te nei rā. Welcome to the hui where we're celebrating our last episode for 2022. Ma wai hei te mata tata te hui ma te manu te ori ori ma bella kalo. Now, over the next hour, we're going to be talking with the movers and shakers of Te Ao Māori and looking back at some of our favourite stories. Mātua rā, ka kōrero tahi ki etahi o ngā Māori kura o te whariparimata. mata. Let's have a kōrero now with Māori Party co-leader Debbie Ngāriwa Pekka and Green Party co-leader Marama Davidson and ex Karen Chul. Tēnā koutou katoa. So we've got two co-leaders here of two parties. Is it time for the ACT Party to have a co-leader? Yeah, no, that's not something um, we've actually had a discussion about. Uh, when we came in, I was quite happy with the process that, that our party has, including the membership and the board to make those decisions. And, and I think they've got the right balance with um, David as the leader and Brooke as the deputy leader. Can't, uh, can't see that changing very soon. Uh, Marama, sometimes people perceive, you know, your party being on the complete opposite side of uh, the ACT Party. But you, are you guys all mates in Parliament? Well, we have to have uh, working relationships, but it's all about common policy, ground and vision and whakaro. It's not about whether you're mates or not, because actually the Green Party are an independent political party and we don't consider any of the other parties our friends or our enemies. We have got clear independent political positions, including te tiriti for Māori. But yes, in Parliament, we have to make it as less toxic as we can manage as well. Mm. You know, so being a little bit uh, ngāwari when we can is also a good thing. Two northerners as well. Absolutely. <laughs> I know that you say that you're the centre of Te Ao Māori, but <laughs> other people consider that you're the centre of politics. And in there, uh, with the election looming, you've got a couple of other parties in there. Is it getting hot in there? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it's getting hot. Uh, to be honest, I think it's um, starting to rev up a bit, which is probably typical of 
um, 2023 on, on the um, horizon. But I, I think most importantly that, you know, we've got to stay focused on what we're there to do. And if we can do it as as whanaunga, um, recognising that we have whanaunga across multiple parties, but we're still the only party that will um, take a Tiriti centric approach in everything that we do. Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah, I think, I don't know if it's, is the word hot or is the word titillating? Hot, no. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what are some of the highs and lows of this year? It's been a tough year, Karen, for you. Oh, so high for me is getting my members bill drawn, um, having a debate on something that I'm passionate about. Low. And what is it? Tell us. Oh, so the members bill is, is about a section within the Oranga Tamariki Act where it is based on the treaty principles and holding the executive accountable to them. And sometimes that's a good thing, and then other times not such a good thing. There's unintended consequences, and I, I'd like to have a debate around that and removing that because I feel it's causing unnecessary harm to some of our children. Kapai. And Mara, what, what about for you, you know, this year? Yeah, well, um, launching Te Aurere Kura, our intergenerational strategy to eliminate family violence, sexual violence for me as Minister, well, why that's so important is because we are trying to change the entire approach that government takes, and part of that is holding matauranga Māori, Māori leadership, not just knowledge, right at the core of everything that we do. There's a lot of work to do to transform how our government works. So, for example, trusting our people to know what is best and to do what is best. We saw some of it through COVID, but it started regressing. The only way to deliver te aurere kura is returning that approach, a high trust, relationship-based approach for Māori communities leading and having the resource and authority to do the mahi is the only way that we will interrupt the intergenerational nature of violence. So that's been really important for me. Um, yeah, I could tell Māori ko ngā piki me ngā heke. What do, you, what do you want to talk about? What's been good oh, for look, the Māori party? I think what's probably been great is being back in there and being able to, you know, every week is a great week and every um, day is a front row day. And I think to be able to bring issues that are pertinent for us, you know, to be able to highlight uh, the Māori um, response during the COVID. I mean, that was huge. And, and Māori, by Māori, for Māori approach worked. It led Absolutely. the way. I think um, having both our members' bills pulled out, so uh, to stop seabed mining um, for myself and uh, for Rawiri to address the um, racism that we have mm. in, in the elections process. Mm. So I think, you know, we like to hold the government to account and also opposition and being able to do that from a tangata whenua um, perspective has, has been great. Use all our comms and our platforms has been really great. Mm. So, yeah. It can be really tough in Parliament, or well, actually just in public life when you're a Māori wo mm. woman. How do you support each other when you get some of that kind of ready and... Mm. Mm. <coughs> well, ju just now, before the show started, um, Mika Whaiteri and I were just giving some ahi to, afi to Karen for finding whakapapa and a lot of Māori are mm. on that journey, actually, a lot of Māori everywhere. And so being able to remember, and Deb said it at the start, our whakapapa connections are stronger than politics. Mm. Supporting us in our whakapapa reconnection journeys is something that we can all do because that house seeks to disconnect us and each other. So going back to whakapapa is one, one way that we can support each other as wahine Māori. That's an exciting journey for you, Karen. Do you know much yet? Uh, not yet. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the end results. I've got someone looking into that for me. So it'll be exciting to find out. Oh, I think it's important because, you know, waka papa and our tūpuna always know us no matter which way yeah. we stand. I do think, though, as Māori, that we have to take a responsibility to stop some of the race baiting and some of the behaviours that go on in the house, which we could be um, doing better. Mm -hmm. And we need to do better as an example for our future generations. We need to use our platform to um, stomp out mm -hmm. um, anti-Māori sentiments. We've seen a lot of that in the house and out of the house. Um, so, yeah, I think... Um, it's exciting to see those that are um, able to reconnect with their taha Māori. So, as Māori women, um, what is one single kaupapa that you could all work together for the betterment of te ao Māori, for wahine, for our tamariki? Yeah, I think I think when when we really have to, we can come together and work together for a, for an end goal. And I'd say that the Oranga Tamariki mm. Oversight Bill is a good example yeah. of how. The three parties came together because we felt that this was going to wrong our children mm -hmm. and this was going to cause a lot of harm to our children. And so we put aside our political differences for the same end goal um, and the Oranga Tamariki Oversight Bill showed we can do that. Yeah. I, I really want to acknowledge Jan Logie as our Tiriti spokesperson, um, also working with directly with Karen and Debbie in particular to be really clear that we need the strong independent oversight for Oranga Tamariki because that is 
what all of the reports and the reviews said really clearly. And the most important voice are our victim survivors' lived experience. So that's one example. But we also mm. support Debbie's yeah, work on you, mining as well. well in terms of mining. Oh, look, I think, I mean, I'm a head to Karen. She knows we work really well and, and agreed on a lot of that kaupapa. But I think the thing that we need to do, and I, I um, I'm going to harp on about it, is that also uh, we need to have parties and, and sadly act as one that don't want to waka mana te tiriti and don't want to waka mana um, the ability for us as Māori to do um, for ourselves and our own mana motahake, Māori Health Authority as an example and those are critical aspects to how we address the wider social complex issues that we contend with as whānau and last week is um, with the way that you know, we want to be dealing with our, our rangatahi um, mm. that are in strife, that's not the way to be dealing with them, boot camps and things. So I think we do, as wahine, we respect each other, but I think as parties, there's some things we could probably never work with, mm. with ACT, and I just want to put that out there um, based okay. on that for Carl. Just, yeah. just before we leave, I just want to know, because when we go home for Christmas, we want to rep some of the places. So where are you going for oh, Christmas? Yeah. Hokianga, for Hokianga. sure. Where are you going for Christmas? Uh, probably up Walkworth. Walkworth. Partia and Weld Road. Yeah, yeah. Tēnā koe kia After the break, we look back at some of the hui's highlights in 2022. It's been a big year in Te Ao Māori. Matariki became a public holiday and our culture in reo continues to be revitalised and reclaimed all around the motu. Let's take a look. Kia tahuri ake tato. I never would have imagined that I would be able to understand my location in the world by using Matauraka Māori and looking up and seeing where the whetu are. I think it's exciting that Aotearoa will be encouraged to look to our skies. They will be exposed to the absolute beauty of the Pacific and of our pristine stars. It's so exciting really to see that Māori want to learn sign and have the opportunity. They've never had that before. It's defiant of those systems that were built to eradicate us. It is an example of what it means to be wahine toa. I think us getting our mokokaua is a very important step for showing all the generations that come that we're really proud to be Māori. I appreciate them still being here. You know, I love the fact that I can still touch them, I can still kiss them, I can still smell them. I can still hug him and everything, you know? I like to think that somewhere deep inside of me, he still recognises who I am. Ko Taranaki. Taranaki. Te maunga. Te maunga. If we don't talk it, and even if it's just a little bit, kangaro ki amata, we're going to lose it. You know, there's always something that jumps up here and says, do you know about this? And they have, oh, it's new learning. Hey, Matapaki, in a opiki or te ao Māori ite nei tau. Ko tai mai nei a ori ni kaipara o News Hub. Rata ko David Stone, Roy a Māori. Ko te koro koro tui. Ko Bella Kalolo te na ko to. Kia ora mai. Kia ora. If I can know ya o kawati e tata o matariki ite nei tau, mo te wā tua tahi ki o fakaro pia. Irawe kia au, irawe kia au, uh, kamutu e whakapaya nau, irawe kia tai wa te ao Māori, i runga i te mea i e whakanui ana, e whakaute ngi ana, te tahi wāhanga nui o te ao Māori, ne, e ai ki ngā tika, ngā tawhito, mm. o te ao tawhito, kam, kamutu, e mihi kauana kia rangi mā tāmua, me pehea e kore ai tika nāna tika. i ora ai te kaupapa. Hoi anō, um, ko te mīharotanga, ko te hiahia, 
Uh, so I'm just saying, you know, I, I'm, I'm so glad that we had Matariki today and that mm. it's officially, you know, uh, props to the government yeah, for yeah. being staunch enough yeah. and courageous enough to go through with it, eh? Yeah. But also, um, all the credit is due to um, Rangi Ma It was uh, beautiful, Papa. Mm. Yeah, it was beautiful. You've been doing some beautiful Papa this year too, David. Um, tell us about your Papa with the medals. Uh, when did it start? Like, when did you first realise that, oh, there's some mahi to be done here. Mm. <laughs> uh, it started well, at least about three years ago, and it literally started with Dad and I just sitting down having a kai, and next to our dinner table there's a picture of uh, Granddad's brother, and I just asked him a question, where's Uncle's medals? Because mm. we had no family history, no family quarter or about him, and I'm, just asked the question and it literally just started from then. And, um, and what have you found so far? <laughs> well, I, I said to Dad, because Kuro, uh, he was part of C Company, and I said to him, he could not have been the only one from C Company that never got his medals because no. it was 900. And um, sure enough, we went through all of C Company and when we f uh, got to the end of the list, we had found 134. And uh, we were going to have, well, we had presentations at Pucky Puck and at C Company House, but I went and saw Coral Bombs, uh, Sir Robert Bomb mm, yes. with the intention of letting him know what we'd done and inviting him to our presentations. And once I told him, before I even asked him if he could be there, he just turned to me and said, I'll be there. Mm. And then he said, what about the rest of my mates? Yeah. And so I said to him, well, take the pipe, you know, and we went through all 3,600 files and at the end of it, we found 550 of our tipura who never got their medals. Wow. Is there a particular story that you will never forget? <laughs> There's actually heaps, yeah. you know, and every single person that comes in, they all have their story. And I've been absolutely privileged just to sit there and to listen to all their mm -hmm. stories. And and the ones that really get you, as it were, are the ones of the wives who come in. Yeah. And, and we've been really blessed to have about seven wives come in claiming their late husband's medals. Oh, and that's yeah. always a bit hard when they say that, you know, I tried 20 years ago yeah. with my husband to get his medals and I can't believe that we're getting them. Mm. And another who said, you know, my husband died over 40 years ago, you That's know? Okay. And you think, wow, I'm just privileged to do this mahi for these queer. Um, we're so yeah. um, lucky that we've got you to do all that mahi. Tēnā koe. Yeah. Bella, it's been a year and a half for our, ma uh, for our Māori musos and our entertainers. Tell us the highs. Oh so many highs to to talk about especially with our kahau baby mm, babies you know yeah. i've had the privilege of mentoring them over the last uh four years three years uh, alongside rob and salaruha um and even teeks teeks has come and helped mentor too so having them come along to um an awards show just to watch one year the next year they came and they backed us as, as we were singing our Thadia from the Moho album. Mm. And then the next year, the third year, them actually winning yeah. three awards. You Amazing. Know, part, the, ultimate you know, one, the ultimate, yeah. Ultimate Silver Scrolls and also um, three uh, Tui. Yeah. And you've been involved in a little bit of Disney? Disney. Yes. Um, man, I was so stoked when Rob was like, you're singing the opening song for um, The Lion King. And I was like, really? Yes, I am. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I was privileged to be able to sing that. And then also, um, alongside all of us, say we get to do this for our tamariki. And also, people like me who are actually starting in the real journey, you know. Yeah. I've had my uh, my toa... Um, my poor in the real, you know, Sills and Rob just yeah. going, go, you, Heidi Tonu Kwe, you know. That's all you need, eh? Yeah. Well, it's been a big year also for film, and you've been in one. Tell us, what was it like to be in Muru? Um, so close to home, eh? Yeah, yeah, it was um, awesome. It was um, 
real special for a lot of us. Tuhoi, mm. the majority of um, of the cast is actually Tuhoi. Yeah, yeah. It was set in Tuhoi. The narratives was not directed by, but led mostly mm. with a lot of Tuhoi descendants <laughs> and those who were actually there involved or who were, oh, so you know, know, subjected to Amazing. that, um, you know, what, what the police did that yeah. day, how they raided them, and we've lost a few of I those people as well. So to see it just morph into this, you know, into mm. what it is, I mean, our nomination on behalf of New Zealand to the Oscars and yeah. big credit to Te Aripa Huge. and Rei Kura oh, yes. Kahi, yeah. you know. So I'm going to up my tuakana yeah. because she has led the way, yeah. and I love the fact, ultimately, he reo, he reo yeah. tu boy. Dave, what are, we looking, what are you looking forward to in 2023? I'm just yeah. looking forward to getting to the end, the end of this year. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Bella? What are you doing for Christmas? Where are you going? We're going to chill out, try to find some, you know, matching pyjamas online, you know. <laughs> yeah, Maybe wear them for the, the whole of Send the holidays. The hey, hey, and then burn them at the end. Piri tōni mai te iwi after the break, we'll discuss some of the challenges Fano have faced during 2022. Well, 2022 has been another tough year for many whānau across Aotearoa. So let's take a look back at some of the issues we've covered. Well, back in 2018, we got told that we had to move because the house was going up for sale. So we ended up calling Housing New Zealand. We were told that it was only emergency housing, and that it would only be three months, and that we would be housed. It breaks my heart because I can see on their face the sadness because of the living situation that we're in. I feel like a failure to my family. I don't know what else to do. You're having to worry about where you're going to stay the next day. And when you've got young children, it's not a good feeling. It's like a mana thing, you know? You feel like you're incapable of being able to provide. The situation that we've been put in is, doesn't allow for growth. We're stuck in a place of survival. How are we supposed to get better when we're just trying to live day by day? It doesn't make sense. Do you think Super City Scaffolding did everything they could to protect you as a worker that day? No. There could have been more done. I'm going to be in a wheelchair for a couple of years. My son needs closure. We need answers. I'm just wanting someone to take the responsibility for what's happened. With an election looming, Aotearoa is still grappling with the impact of COVID and a cost of living crisis to boot. Let's have a kōrero now with Labour's Nika Whaitere and the National Party's Dr Shane Reti. Tēnā kōrō 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 te wā. No mai hoki mai ki te hui. So as you know, it's tough out there for whānau. The Māori Party wants to remove GST from kai. So would you, could you, should you remove GST from kai? No, I think that's complicated. Uh, I do understand the cost of living. Yeah, if we look back at your own poll, actually in March... Uh, it showed that uh, for Māori, that was the top of their list of issues, actually, about 72%, um, as I recall. So it's really tough out there. Food, transport, it's all expensive. So why not what just the, remove the 15%? So what the international experience is, is that when you start creating exclusions for a GST protocol, like they have in Australia, it gets complicated, becomes unmanageable. So fundamentally unmanageable. There are other levers that can be pulled to, uh, uh, to attend to cost of living. Mecca, what about you? Did you on a principle, did you, would you support it? Because if you were to buy $250 worth of groceries, mm. it's nearly 40 bucks. That's money in the pocket. So it's, it's complex. It's hard to implement. So you're talking about a $5 billion tax cut. So on the um, Mighty Party stats, it's not just money off food and veggies. It's actually money off sugary drinks. And so we've got a big issue around um, diabetes and overweightness. So, uh, look, we're looking at uh, tailored measures. Uh, we've announced them. Uh, we've pointed to the Groceries Commissioner to ensure that our cost of uh, groceries are fair. 
What's the National Party solution? How do you put 40 bucks back into the pocket? Yeah, what we fundamentally do, the, the key lever that we pull is we adjust the tax brackets, put more money back in people's pockets so that they can make choices so that they can afford... Pockets, uh, it would because, be everyone's you know, pockets. If you, if, well, yeah, but it would be like two bucks for people who are on a benefit. No, it will be substantive, for, particularly for middle, you know, middle New Zealand who's feeling the squeeze at the moment, that uh, adjustment of the tax brackets will put more money back in their pockets and will make a difference. You know, if you're, if you're on the Prime Minister's wage, mm. you get something like 54000 over four years yeah. compared and to $2 a week for somebody who's on minimum. And that's why we focus our measure of packages, focusing on the low and middle income. So, obviously, the trend transport changes in terms of free public transport, reducing road user charges, of course, the fuel exercise tax reduction, as well as lifting minimum wage. So we want to help our low middle income earners. And like um, Dr, or respect to Dr um, Shane here, uh, their taxes haven't been tested and they haven't been costed and therefore their policy can't be trusted. So it's a Māori show, so we like to talk about Māori things. So yeah. with the election looming next year, you know, <laughs> let's talk about the Māori party. They may... You, who knows, someone might have to work with them. Is there a policy you like about them? Uh, look, I think uh, we've got a, a lot of uh, common ground that we could find with the Māori Party, but, you know, election is still to happen and we're not going to declare uh, what might be in and what might not be in. That would seem to be a little bit precipitous. So let's just say we're, we're, we're keeping that open. Uh, we uh, enjoy them as colleagues and uh, certainly outside of the House people will see as we in, enjoy their company. We could work with them. Um, we just have to see where we each land uh, at election time. Anything in there that you oh, like about them? Oh, ultimately, of course, we get on with both Dawidi and Deb, and they do a, a stellar job, but so do 14 of my other Māori, Labour Māori caucus members, and you need critical mass in Parliament to make the difference for Māori. And so, absolutely, ultimately, it's going to be up to the um, voters on election night as to who we work with. But we've got a big work programme. We've got a Māori manifesto, and that's what we're getting on delivering. What are some of the highs and lows of 2022 for you? Uh, highs and lows, uh, I think I've been uh, pleased with how the caucus has come together, uh, the way we're operating as a team and the talent that we're seeing in the candidate selection. Got a new guy but, in uh, Hamilton? Yeah, we have. Got creds. He's done, some, he's done some stuff, and some stuff in the Māori domain as well. He's building houses out at Middlemore, for goodness sake. So not just a good, tra a good track record on a CV, but actually and joining stuff together. Though. Yes, yeah, so, uh, like tw 20 years ago, back in his uh, law degree, you and I have all, we've all probably written something if we go back in our university times that might be different to what we're thinking today. <laughs> Mika, what are some of the highs and lows for the government? Oh, I think getting through COVID, and COVID hasn't completely left, uh, left no. us. I mean, we've fought really hard not to open borders when many of our Māori communities, particularly Taitokoro and Tairawhiti, didn't have their vaccination numbers. So I'm really proud that we kept borders closed while we lifted up vaccination rates. But of course, that required some uh, enormous resourcing that Went in. So I just want to acknowledge and mihi out to our whole order providers up and down that ran weekends, night, in workplaces to try and get our vaccination numbers. So I'm really pleased around that. Low points, you know, we're coming into election. We've still got 12 months to go. We've still got so much to do. Um, it's not so much a low point. It's just that we're running out of time to do the big critical issues that our people want us to do, which is create resilience in amongst our whanau when we know we've got this crisis. Mm. Housing is still a big one. But, you know, I'm proud of Labour's record to date. If you get into government, you're still going to repeal the Māori Health Authority? I will. Uh, I will repeal the Māori Health Authority because while I completely agree on the objectives, don't disagree, I've published on it, I don't believe that is the pathway and the mechanism to get there. More specifically, in five, years time, you, you in five years' time, I need uh, benefits within year one, not five years' time, which is yeah, what the government We just talked about show. the benefits. We could just talked about the um, COVID approach and, and how that well can all, that's They can all be done without a Māori Health Authority. And by the way, we're five months in. You seeing any outcomes? You seeing any benefit to date? I'm surely not. And, and I would challenge uh, Dr. Well, that's a good question. What is the outcomes of the Māori Health Authority? So, we've never answered this year's budget $71 million into Māori capacity around priority planning, around workforce development, around um, you know ensuring that we've got uh, Mātauranga Māori. So, we're building capacity amongst our Māori providers, which we've never done historically. In addition to that, we want them to be able to have a say on who gets a service, which in the past uh, life, uh, it's dependent on who you knew, where you lived, and we're addressing that. Kapai, I've got, because it's a Christmas show, <laughs> do you have a Christmas wish for someone out there? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'd say to everyone, um, travel safely, and, and with my clinical hat on, please. Put on sunblock. Now, Māori don't actually get melanoma and those sorts of things because we're naturally blessed with, with pigment. Even so, put on sunblock.
put on a sunblock, put on a hat, and drive safely. Can't play. And Mika? My message is to the whānau out there. It has been a hard couple of years. It's time now just to be with whānau, uh, to put down tools, um, you know, and just be in, in amongst the people that love you and you love them and just spend some really quality time. Tēnā kōrua. Thank you for joining us today. After the break, we're out the gate for three of our new Māori mayors. Happy Mai Anō. Well, this year the Hui team has travelled far and wide covering the stories that impact our local communities, from drinking water to driver licensing. Let's take a look at some of the challenges our whānau in the provinces have faced. Mā takitaki mai. You need to boil it at least three times before I drink that water. E. coli is present in that sample. From a public health perspective, is that a concern? It's um, very serious from a public health perspective. Young people will be pulled up because they're only on their learners or they've got no licence at all because we haven't got the facility here for them to sit that test. How on earth did they think our kids were going to get licences? I reckon my path would have led just to heaps of fines, heaps of court dates, probably end up in the cells. But now I reckon I'm going somewhere with my life. We do indeed have those foul odours going well beyond the boundary of the plant. You've been to the toilet and not flushed it and gone back a week later? It's bad, man. I'm going to be gambling on my children's life due to living amongst this and breathing this in. I would say it's almost in its last throes of death. That bad? That bad. If we keep exploiting the natural world, the taiao, then the taiao will give up on us. And that's what we're seeing. Joining me now are three of Aotearoa's brand new Māori mayors, the Mayor of Whanganui Atara Tori Fano, the Mayor of the Far North Mokotipania, and the Mayor of Rotorua Tania Tetsu. Tēnā koe tō. Tēnā koe. Tania, was it always a destiny, a dream to be the Mayor? <laughs> yes, I, it was, it was, and um, it's quite special because in my mayor's office on the wall is the Fenton Agreement. Now, that Rotorua Township Agreement is one of the other treaties that was signed here in New Zealand, one of the few treaties, including Te Tiriti o Waitangi, where we established the Rotorua Township alongside three of the hapu, which I affiliate to. So on there's a couple of names from my ancestors, so it's a pleasure. And I think that they'll be proud that 142 Hi. years on, we have our first Māori wahine mayor Rotorua. Kare e kore. How about you, Mboko? Was this always the plan? No, no, it wasn't. It was never the plan. Um, it wasn't the plan to run for council three years ago and become a councillor or to be the mayor. But um, Matariki Weekend, my whānau said, you know, you're up, mate. Like, um, you've been chosen to do this and you have to do it. And, and, and I agreed, you know, if, if I didn't give it a go, then I wouldn't be able to be hoha with whoever did get in and Look what happened, actually got in, so I'm really excited for the next three years. And Tori, there were three of you and uh, you came right through the middle and took that. I remember I the night that you won and you came out and, and people were very pleased. Yes. Um, some were a little surprised. What about you? Yeah, I, I, I knew I was going to win because I came in a year prior to the election with that goal of winning. It was something that I really wanted. It was something that I wanted for our city. I just didn't think I would win by that many votes. So it was a really exciting night. I feel very humbled by it uh, and I'm really excited. Santa came early. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, she did. She did. Yes, she did. <laughs> no, These she, days. Yes, she did. Um, you know, now that you're in the seat, Tania, what are some of the issues that you've found uh, issues that you're going to have to deal with. Mm. Interestingly, and for perhaps the first time in living memory, our biggest issues do evolve around central government policies. So for our local council, it's addressing emergency housing, housing in general, and also community safety. Yeah. And Moko, how about you? Up in the farm, oh, there's well, so many. 
There, there are so many, but number one, you know, during the campaign and just living up there mm. is roading. I mean, we've got 20,000 people who live in the far north who are actually cut off because State Highway 1 Mangamuka is still closed for the foreseeable future as well. That's affecting lives daily for the people who live back home. Alongside that is three waters. We have 16 wastewater mm. treatment plants. Four of them are non-compliant. Um, four of them are discharging into the Hokianga Harbour. So, you know, that's culturally abhorrent for our iwi and hapu mm. back home. Big, big issues that we have to tackle over the next three years. And you're in the home of central government, mm. so unlike the, these uh, other provinces and cities, your issues will be different. What have you found? Uh, very much water infrastructure and, and Three Waters. So I've always been a vocal supporter of Three Waters and having that direct contact with um, the minister has been really useful. Housing is still a bit of a crisis in Wellington, so we want to increase supply as much as possible. And of course, public transport. We're probably a bit behind and we're keen to push for, forward mass rapid transit uh, as soon as possible. One of the kind of trigger words that, or, or phrases that have come up is around co-governance. How do you plan to deal with the eight uh, Pumanua or Te Arawa? Are they going to be at the table? Yes, but Roshiro for a long time has done an excellent job at co-governance and actually looking at those assets that we do share with iwi or our iwi assets, how do we utilise them to achieve both the council but also iwi's aspirations? It hasn't always been that way in the past. Sometimes it's been horrendous, actually. People have been kicked off their land, a lot of iwi grievances, but I'm very pleased that we're at the stage now where we're not only returning springs and returning land but actually saying that working together is a must for the future. But where do they work from? Are they, you know, you're going to bring them in? Like, do you have a plan for co-governance? So we are actually quite advanced in Rotorua, which is why when we talk about co-governance, it's something we've been doing for generations. But we do say that the, uh, if we look at that from a nationwide perspective, we need to really protect our mana whenua's voice, our individual iwi and hapu for potentially being amalgamated. When we do talk about three waters, where they won't necessarily represent themselves, they will have someone else representing them. So that co-governance, I'm a little bit concerned about. What makes me hoha in this space though, right, is that it gets politicised and gets made out to be mm. a black and white or a red and blue mm. situation when it in fact is not. I mean, co-governance, it's like this word that's been dirtied now so that anyone who isn't Māori hears that and it makes them shudder. When if you look at the on-the-ground examples of co-governance and it's happening very successfully, so I'm really nervous for the upcoming central yeah, government you elections, to you know. Well, you've just got to continually stand up against the rhetoric that comes across that tries to politicise this and to make it something that will just win votes and look at on-the-ground examples of where it can be incredibly successful, mm -hmm. um, of where you actually, through legislation, we have to have iwi, hapu or mana whenua voice at the table in terms of what we do at local government. So co-governance is a must. Has mana have been looked after in the past? Um, probably not in the past, to be honest, but over the last couple of years, we, we actually signed an agreement, Takaihere, uh, with Mana Whenua, uh, and that ensures that on top of our Māori ward representative, we have two uh, Mana Whenua representatives at the council table. And when it comes to our really key projects, there's co-design, co co-governance. Uh, and Wellington has actually received it pretty well, thank goodness. Mm. Uh, but I agree, it has been used as a really negative uh, rhetoric tool uh, which is a real shameful thing when actually it's it's a beautiful thing. And I'm looking forward to telling that really positive story that perhaps other regions can use as well. As young Māori mayors, how can you all work together for the benefit of Te Ao Māori? I think, you know, korero kanohi ki te kanohi, face to face, uh, you just can't beat it. So in the middle of trying to find a strong local voice for all of our individual councils, I think actually having those conversations of which it's been a pleasure to meet these two other young Māori mayors mm -hmm. is going to be really important so that our voice collectively can be strong for the various local communities across Aotearoa. It's about relationships, you know, far north, talking to the Wellington mayor. Oh, absolutely. You know, my tiku o tika ki tona upoko, it's very important to have those relationships and those conversations. Um, we also um, have formal ways of doing so. Uh, local Government New Zealand has a te marua te Whānui network for mm. any Māori who are in council, including um, the three of us and the other three Māori mayors, so six of us who made it through in these elections. And um, it's about using those networks to be able to ensure that we're all on yeah, the right track and support each other. What does it say about Aotearoa that, you know, we have three Māori mayors sitting at the table today? I think this is a sign of the future.
And I feel really, you know, when I think about the Wellington voters, I am so proud of them for voting this way. I think it's a really good sign of things to come. And even politically, we might sit on, you know, slightly different um, areas, but that's okay. We, we've come together. We can have really great chats. And um, oh, look, I, I think we can say we're mates now. Uh, <laughs> oh, because this is how the young ones, like, we, we just yeah. care about our people. We care about our land. And we just want to find the best solution possible. And we will do that. More than just ego. Away, and that's what's yeah. been wrong with these no, spaces 100%. for so long is it's about being people, you know, and not about the people. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, exactly. If someone was going on a holiday this Christmas, what's the jewel in the crown of Te Arua? Oh, definitely our lakes. You know, we've got 16 to choose from, but my favourite will be Lake Tarawera. And quickly... Oh, Hokianga Harbour, north or south, wherever you want to come, no my haere mai. Te Whanganui, Atara? Zealandia. Tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you so much for sharing with us in our finale. Kia ora. Kia ora. After the break, we have some important news to share about the hui next year. Well, this is not only our final episode for the year, it's also our very last show for the Hui. But don't worry because the rest of the team will be back next year with more of your stories. So joining me now to have a cordial are the Hui reporters, uh, Sarah Hall, Rowani Pereira, John Boynton and D'Angelo Martin and our executive producer, Annabelle Lee. May the tēnā koutou katoa. Seven years. Auntie Bells, you feeling emotional about leaving? I'm feeling exhausted, um, <laughs> but no, I do feel a little bit emotional. It's been an incredible seven years, but I I am also really excited um, that there's going to be fresh energy, fresh ideas coming into the hui next year. Feels like a good time to go. Sarah, um, you know you've got around the motu doing stories about you know our pani mete our, uh, our vulnerable. What's it been like out there in 2022? Um, well, we're still seeing lots and lots of vulnerable people out there. I mean, that's, that is part of our life, isn't it, here? But I think our audience who are so amazing, who want to tell their stories, who are so brave that they come on our show, you know, um, so much respect for them, for the people who will go on our show and tell their stories because mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's incredibly difficult. But thank you you to them and like you know please keep coming forward because that's how we change things yeah um i keep saying to rowani that she's peaking in her reporting her career because it's a, a fantastic story she's been doing but it's been tough eh, Ru, because we came through COVID and we did a, well, i don't even know how many stories in lockdown yeah. how's it been for you and how was it for our audience I think it was 20 plus shows we managed to do without actually meeting our talent as usual and having a cup of tea with them and, you know, sharing a, a kai with them. It was, it was uh, hard, but, mm. you know, we might have lived in these bubbles, but poverty still continued, mm. homelessness still continued. And I guess, you know, when you layer COVID on top of all those existing problems as well, um, it was it was tough times that we found, you know. But mm. um, I'd like to mahi to um, you, mahi, and to Annabelle for um, this, Bells. You created this beautiful baby and um, really important stories in the vehicle um, using, you know, your voices, which is fantastic. Mm. So thank Kia you. Kia ora, Roo, Roo. Kia ora. Um, um, and John joined us a couple of years in. And you've been doing some wonderful stories, John. Tell us about some of the, the kaupapa that you've been doing that you've really felt like have been worthy of telling. You know, I think we all tell a lot of stories that can be quite taumaha and pauri. And, you know, recently I covered the story of Jermaine Wharton, a much-loved father and un um, uncle, nephew, partner, who was murdered during the 21st in Waoho. And his whanau came to us, you know, wanting to give him a voice, but also to talk about the way he died, how he was killed outside of his urupa and it makes you realise, you know, the platform that we do have and vulnerable Fano do come to us wanting to tell those stories and they're really difficult to tell and it's so important that we tell them and, you know, Matsutu kind of they have laid the foundation to have that kind of platform for these 
really, really tough stories. Tēnā koe, John. Well, ko kotahi tau i nei nei ko fifi ko riro i a koe i tōpū horo. What's it been like in the last year? Is it um, you know been a year since you've had your tāunga, your pū horo? Oh, he picking a way to a te fifi i taku pū horo. He tohu te nei o te kairaka o te toa. He tohu ano te nei he fa kamana i ara te mā ko wehe atu ki te pōra te mā ko. Uh, huri tuara mai ki a mātou te ao, uh, kiko kiko i tēnei wā. Nā reira, uh, e tika rā me mihi atu ki a rātou, rātou anō wā mātou tūpuna i para i te huarahi, uh, ki a tū toka uh, ai mātou ki roto i tēnei ao huri huri. Nā rātou anō te ara i para, uh, nā reira, um, ai, uh, e noho poho kiruru ana au i tēnei wā, um, he tohu tēnei, he... Fakatu atu ki te ao, he Māori au, nā reira me noho pū au ki roto i taku au Māori. Um, anō nei, uh, ko te momo mahi um, e ruku atu ana e au uh, i tēnei wā, ko, ko ngā mahi pēnei i te kairi pōta. He karanga tēnei pia uh, ki wā mātou whanaunga uh, tiwi Māori kātika. Um, hā koa ngā taumahatanga o te wā, hā koa ngā kinotanga uh, ko pānei ki runga i a mātou o ti rā tātou. He tūranga tonu um, tēnei mahi te kairi pota, hei waha atu i ngā āwangawanga o tira uh, i ngā aue o te iwi. Um, nā reira, hākoa um, he roa uh, te, te takahitanga uh, kei mua tonu i a mātou te Māori e koa ngā te ngākau uh, koa eke atu ai pea tātou te kāhui o te hui ki ngā taumata iki ki i whakarite aitia i ngā mātou e ngā tūpuna. Kia ora, wā. Um, even though ko ngā kanohi o te pauka whakāte i nei, there's always so many behind the cameras and all the rest. Like, have you got a Christmas, Mihi? Oh, I'd just like to thank everyone who's supported us over the last seven years. Our studio crew at TV3 who have um, been very patient with us. People like Mel Jones, who's been our kaitiaki mm. at TV3 and before her, the late Keith Slater, um, our lawyer, Willie Akel, who we keep very, very busy. <laughs> um, our editor, Debbie Matthews, Kura, all and Caitlin, all our camera yeah. operators, everyone. We're so grateful for everything that they've done. And we're looking forward to all the beautiful, beautiful, uh, amazing stories that you guys are going to produce next year. Mm. Uh, as this is our Kaifakataki Mihingarangi and our producer Annabelle's last show for the Hui, um, e tiro whakamuri tātou i nāne, let's take a look back at some of the stories they've told over the last seven years. More than 100,000 children were removed from their families and placed in state care facilities between the 1950s and 1980s. Yeah, that would have to be one of the worst times of my life. Kohi tere. Yeah. Worse than jail. Worse than jail. Jamie is a 27-year-old mother of one. Since she disappeared in October, her grandparents, Eru and Ilan Kaiwai, haven't stopped looking for her. There was no body, no suicide note, just a whole lot of unanswered questions. They said that she was seen at the end of the war. And that was it. The police have said the case isn't suspicious. And I guess with her occasional drug use, with the mental health history, what is it about that that you can't accept? What I can't accept is the lack of investigation surrounding her disappearance. Can you accept that she may have just disappeared like that? No. There's got to be something else alongside this. Is it a feeling you have? Yeah. Yeah, it's a feeling. Mm. Yeah. That silly female sang it in Maori to a deathly hush from some extremely angry New Zealanders. The only sound other than her rather shrill voice was a yell of sing it in English. Why do you think you keep with them? Hmm. It is a little piece of history, my history, and um, even though it had been for a long time painful to read, I can read it now and, and not even cry. <laughs> Finally, after months of abuse, Janae reached her breaking point. Do you remember telling your mum when you'd had enough? 
yeah, um, it was one night I trained him. Uh, he was, again, picking on me, bullying me. He was yelling at me in front of the whole class. We were driving home, and then Mum was just like, I think you need to go up to him, give him a hug, and say how sorry you are, and say that you're sorry. And I looked at her, and now I'm just like, Mum, stop the car. And I know it feels, I know it sounds weird, but I felt something touch me. And like, I think it was my ancestors wanted to put that, you know? And like, I just heard a voice saying, it's time to let go, it's time to say it. 29 and dying of cancer. Rhys Delamere is pleading for her husband to be allowed out of prison early. I need him home. He has just two weeks left on his sentence. She has just days. Do you want to say anything to those people who have all the power to let him out? Yep. What do you want to say to them? I must get him up. Corrections granted the application, and the next day he was due to arrive at 9 a.m. But Rez died just six hours before Gerald could get there. She never got to reunite with him again. This place has been taken for granted by New Zealand and by our government. People haven't fully understood the significance of it. So we want people to enjoy it, but there's a way in which you can enjoy it by honouring that spiritual and cultural significance. And Manamotu Hake looks like that for Ngāti Kuri, being able to make the decisions that are best for our moana, for our whenua, for our motere. That's the authority that we have, and we should be allowed to exercise that. Thanks for watching Ehua Mana. Special thanks to all our Manuhiri and everyone who has shared their stories with us this year. GS TV, Te Mangai Paho, New Zealand on Air, TV3, E Mihiana Tengako, Kia Koto Katoa. So for the very last time, ko hikina te hui, no horumai. He nui.
Te puna whakatonga rewa te hui i tautoko. 